What a week. We announced our hololuminescent display a few days ago, and I've seen a lot of questions popping up. Why did we do it? How does it work? Is it as thin as a literal razor? Uh, so I'm gonna answer all of those in this first part of a series that doesn't yet have a name, so let's temporarily call it Hologram Talk. So, why did we make the hololuminescent display, HLD for short? We've been making various types of spatial displays, light field displays, lots of experiments over the last 10 years. And we've learned over that time that there are really two types of problems folks have that they're trying to solve with a headset-free, group-viewable, three-dimensional system. So class of problem one is a 3D problem. So that's where maybe a surgeon or a medical student is trying to understand anatomy and needs to see around veins and arteries and what have you in a deeply three-dimensional way. Or you have geospatial data that is genuinely complex three-dimensional information that you need a group of people to understand to make certain assessments and what have you around. So for those types of problems, complex 3D problems, we've built a technology called light field display. And that's what we've been selling to enterprise developers, individual developers and others over the last 10 years really. But what we learned is that there's also this second category of problem. That's a presence problem or a attention problem or a magic problem that someone has. So let's say you have a digital signage in a shop in a sea of two-dimensional displays. How do you draw someone's attention? Folks have tried to do that with their light field displays, but we thought that there might be a better way to do it for that specific type of challenge. Also, when you have a character that you're trying to make feel different and more present than it might feel on a two-dimensional screen. No one likes to talk to a two-dimensional character. So in a world of conversational embodied AIs, a lot of folks have asked us, can you make a holographic conversational AI? And we said yes, and we made rabbits and all types of different conversational AIs over the last few years, but they were also not really a 3D, a complex 3D problem, that was a presence problem. How do you make a character that you're engaging with and chatting with feel as if it is there in the room with you? How do you make it feel more real than it would feel on your phone or your laptop? And of course, people. So we're all doing Zoom and stuff like that all the time. So folks always ask us, is there a way to make a person that I'm seeing a video of or maybe even having a conversation with feel like they're more real than they feel in a Zoom call. And we've done a bunch of experiments with that, with our light field display. But we determined that this second category of problem, which is really a presence or attention or magic problem, can be better served with an entirely new category of display. And so we invented one, and it's right here, right next to me, called the hololuminescent display. And I'll play some different content here, some different holograms. So you can see with the hololuminescent display, it has some advantages over every holographic system out there in the world, but also for that category of presence problem, hololuminescent display is actually better than a light field display for that type of scenario. So you can see you can get incredibly sharp 4K text, you get really fine details on the hologram, it's really easy to make content. I actually think Oliver and our team made this with AI. And so he's probably said, make me a swiveling chair <laughs> with some text around it. And bada bing, bada boom, you pull it through our templates and plugins that apply the right shadows, apply the, the reflections that map to a truly three-dimensional holographic embedding. And you are able to make this chair, so objects or products, but also people and characters feel like they're more in the room than they would feel in a two-dimensional display. But with higher resolution on text and fine details than you can get with any other three-dimensional system, including our own light field displays, 
and uh, with a much easier content pipeline. I'll show you that, like our light field displays, this hollow luminescent display is very thin. So this one is about an inch thick. So this is a pre-production prototype unit, but this is pretty close to what it'll be in production. And so the actual display thickness is, I think this one is, comes in just under an inch. And for the 16 inch models and smaller experimental models that we're making as well, you can get to millimeters of thickness, basically what you would get with a regular two dimensional display. But with something that presents and really generates this incredible amount of depth that goes beyond the physical bounds of the display itself. So yeah, that's why we made the hololuminescent display. It's also cheaper than any other three-dimensional system out there in the world. So it comes in in the low thousands of dollars for digital signage, going from $1,500 up to $3,000. And then at scale for smaller units, that we're talking to some folks about potentially doing something around. It's something where we can approach consumer price points as well with HLD technology. So it really is a brand new category of display where we've built the hologram into the optical stack of the display itself and successful in being able to bring the magic of holograms that folks know us for to a much easier to use platform. I will say, hopefully you can notice this, it films really well. So uh, this is not an AI generated holographic representation. This is something where, well, it's just running right next to me. And uh, oh yeah, I wanted to show you that actually uh, on that point of it films really well. If you can get this yeam, I don't know. So I'm gonna use my phone here. It's, is this working? I don't know if this is working, but you can see that just plopped out my phone and you can really see that it is this incredible holographic representation of this chair that comes across in person and in video in exactly the same way. So yeah, I know there's some other questions about how the HLD works. And so for that, I will put on our friendly octopus for question time, the question octopus. So do you get shipped with the product? What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Someone saw you dancing and asked that. Oh, do I get shipped with the product? If you're one of the first hundred people to get your HLD, then yes, actually, that it, all joking aside, we're doing a small limited production run of the 16 inch and 27 inch HLDs. So those will be shipping first come first serve and we will sell out of those. I don't know where we're at exactly on the numbers since we first announced publicly 24 hours ago or whenever this video comes out. We announced really since from the moment that we're shooting this video, we announced about 24 hours ago and we're already seeing tremendous interest. So if you are interested in getting one of the first HLDs in the world, then you should order now because otherwise you'll be back in the line. And yes, I do ship with every HLD, a video of me. Ah, do you need this beautiful alcove? So some people call it a box, but I like to call it an alcove. But all of the standard 16 inch, 27 inch and 86 inch unit HLDs that will be shipping initially, they will come with this standard holographic embedding. Again, that's a holographic form that is actually three-dimensional. There's no tracking on it. This is not a trick. That's presenting itself as a deep alcove that looks like it's really there. That is something that is baked into the display itself. And these first units have that by default. And that gives maximum flexibility for content. So it's really easy to have characters and people, different types of products in this sort of more blank form. You can get different colors, you can change the background, you can have different lighting effects and particle effects and things like that that make it even more dynamic. Hopefully we're gonna be able to splice in video of that because I don't have any here with me right now. But we control the entire software and hardware stack of this product, meaning we have made and have the ability to make custom holographic embeddings. So if someone wants a forest scene, 
that cute little character is surrounded by, with that forest scene being deeply three-dimensional, then we have the ability to do that at certain volumes for certain projects. So that's not a standard offering, but if that's a requirement for your project, then you should write us because we've made those, they're really cool, and we can do that. So what are the compute requirements for the HLD? They're the same compute requirements you would have for any type of content or application that you'd be running in a two-dimensional display. So you can really think about the HLD from a compute requirement perspective as being identical to a two-dimensional display. So if you, for instance, are running a managed media box or set-top box, you know, you have content in a bunch of stores that's running on two-dimensional displays and you have something like a bright sign box or other sort of player, well, you can use that same player for the HLD. You literally unplug it from the two-dimensional display that you were plugged into and then you plug it in over the included HDMI or DP display port that is in all of the models of the HLDs and then you're off to the races. That'll let you manage content remotely and what have you if that's already built into the media box that you're plugging in. For interactive content, you can build apps just like you would build for display on a two-dimensional display and have them deployed to Android devices, iOS devices like iPads, and you can have them deployed on PCs or MacBook Studios or what have you. Whatever you're running your application or content on in a two-dimensional display, you'll be able to take that same computer or media box and run it in the HLD systems. We do ship all of these with an included little demo media box, which is basically a glorified Raspberry Pi 4 that just has a media player that we wrote that plays holographic videos on it. But you can make those videos for demo and then literally take out the USB key that's plugged into our little demo media box, and plug it into whatever you use for wide-scale deployments, and it'll work. Someone asked, what the fuck does AI write? <laughs> Yeah, there was some debate on whether to put that into the video. So by AI ready, we just wanted folks to know that you can run various types of AI content like conversational AIs when you have a holographic embodiment of a character that you're chatting with that, you know, has chat GPT or something like that running in the back end. We've obviously built a bunch of these ourselves and we've had a lot of interest in conversational AIs embodied AI that you can chat with in the HLD. And so the HLD doesn't ship with a conversational AI built in, at least not for the two models or the three models that we're shipping initially. But if you've built an application with a conversational AI as part of it, if you've built that in Unity, if you've built that in Unreal, if you're using MetaHumans to build conversational AI experiences, you can take that experience that you built for a two-dimensional display and very easily with our plugins and templates get that working in the HLD and have it feel like that character or personality is way more real than they feel on a two-dimensional display. So that's what we mean by AI ready is that it can run real-time AI powered apps if you have built those apps and you can plug them in. Oh yeah, so I saw some comments on our YouTube video that we put out for launch of the HLD and one person got really upset about our use of the term razor thin. He was saying something like, razor thin? You know, yeah, it's, it's thin, I get it, but have you seen a razor before? Maybe you should have tried paper thin, but it's not even as thin as paper. Maybe you could just have used the word thin. And my answer to that is, the word thin alone is just not that exciting. And so we added the word razor in front of it. But you can see it is very real. And so that's all I have to say about that. Ah, so why are we making portrait oriented systems? For that question, I'm gonna call in Alex Duncan, who heads up our software team. Keep it rolling. Keep going. <laughs> Thanks. Hey folks. Yeah, so this is the first rollout of the HLD. And for these initial product SKUs, we're really focusing in on digital signage, really, as our core use case. So that's things like retail displays, trade show displays, etc. 
anywhere where there's like a lot of people walking around, a lot of foot traffic, and you want to have something that's really interesting, novel, that makes the product feel like it's there or a person feel like they're there, that's what we're really aiming for with this. And that's why it's portrait oriented. That industry has a lot of portrait oriented displays, so that felt like the natural fit for us. The core technology of HLDs can do a lot more than that. That's just like the first big use case we're going after. And we can make them in landscape orientation as well. There's no limitation there. So as we kind of increase our, um, the reach of the core technology and expand the product line, that's something we'll be looking at. We'll be looking at landscape displays. We'll be looking at different sizes of displays and different use cases for it. Yeah. Also characters. Showing people and characters is great in a portrait oriented system. I'll show you a person here. Let's see. Not a person. Not a person. Great, but not a person. <laughs> Wait, let, let's let the, the shark spin around. It's a beautiful shark. Beautiful. Um, not a person. This is a person. Look how lifelike that guy is. More lifelike than real life. Yeah, so people, AI characters that you're having conversation with, and things in the digital signage space really demand a portrait-oriented system. Where can you see a demo? So you've been intrigued by the videos that you've seen here and online, and you're like, is that real? Is that AI-generated smut? No, it's not slut. Smut is a type of scandalous book. Yeah, not just book. Smut can just Is that just AI-generated slop? And the answer is no, this is real. This would take a lot of effort to simulate, even for the AIs of today. But I understand you may still be skeptical. And so you should write us at Beep. Beep. <laughs> There's an email on the screen somewhere. I've been told not to give out my own email so much, even though I like to do that. My own email is smf at lookingglassfactory.com. You can write me and then I will work with our team to have you over to our office in Brooklyn. We also have an office in Hong Kong, but you're not allowed there because we do the secret stuff there. We also were doing some events over there. <laughs> we're also doing events. I've been reminded that we're doing incredible events over the next month at a pace that's strangely possible with such a small team as we have. And so we're doing events with amazing partners across the world, hemisphere to hemisphere. And so um, look out for those, I guess. We'll probably be posting about them. But if you're in the New York area, then an event could be you coming to our office. We occasionally have coffee and beer as well. So come on over and check out some real holographic magic, not AI smut. Slop. Your, your energy post-lunch is a lot better than pre-lunch, actually. Mm. Pre-lunch? Yeah. He runs on calories. I know, I'm just saying. I'm a human. <laughs> yeah. no, but just not, not yeah, I'm getting some feedback here. I hope you're capturing. I'm getting feedback that my energy is not good pre-lunch. It's much better post-lunch. <laughs> your answers were much more energetic after you went out for lunch. Which ones do I need to redo then? I don't know. Time. I have to answer 10 million emails now because of the incredible interest we're getting. Yeah. Literally 10 million emails are awaiting me and I'm going to that now. <laughs>